today on Zoom, when you're all through making your bracelet, it should look like this. A button bracelet. It's really easy to make. I'm Cassie, and I am 11 years old, and I want to show you the coral reef of Key Largo, Florida. Go! <laughs> Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Arthur Mining Davis Foundation, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thanks! Hello, oh, we're the Junior Girl Scout Shoot number 500. Right here in Northampton, Massachusetts. Get ready to do! Yeah! Oh, you need on the ground. A barn swallow made it out of grapevines, grass, and mud. The barn swallow wasn't using it anymore, so our friend was able to loan it to us. Kaylee found this nest made out of moss and grass in the yard outside of her house. The birds made these nests in the same biome, a northern temperate forest. Temperate forest means that it has both hot and cold seasons, along with a medium amount of rain. Isn't it cool that these birds live in the same biome, but use different materials to make their nests? Well, Madison E. of Franklin, Ohio, which, by the way, is the northern temperate area, challenged us to build a bird's nest. We can use mud, grass, twigs, moss, string, and straw. Some birds make their nests in trees, and they're supported by branches. Since we don't have trees on Zoom, we're going to use these meter sticks and sticks to support our nest. Rachel and Matt are going to work together, and I'm going to work with Carolyn to see whose nest can support the most eggs. All right, are you ready to start? Yep. Yeah. 
I think for where it's going to be, right. I think it would be wide so it can support, like it can be supported by this. Because it's it, very strong. It has to be really dense because it has to support, the eggs are pretty heavy. Yeah. If we entwine like maybe a grass or straw into what? Into like, into like strips to make like a base for, and then we could put mud on top. To yeah. make a base to hold the mud like a cradle. What do you think should be our out like our outside things? I know mud is gonna be our outside because you think that's hard, right. but do you think I think I think we should I cover it like it the outside mud with and then maybe moss. I think I like yeah. the idea of how it's soft like, on the outside. I actually think that it'll work if we like take patches of it. Oh, and weave it into patches? Or yeah, maybe weaving it with patches because it'll I think it'll just work better. Well, that's a lot of mud, but it'll work. I was kind of looking at this one, how how sturdy it is, and maybe if we have like on the outside. I'm not sure, like for our layers, like that. I think that's gonna be too dense. Like we're gonna have to need a little place to put the eggs. So if we put it around like that. Much. We might try to take off as much excess mud though. Yeah, because once it sticks, because it sticks heavy, it does, and it won't be able to hold much weight. So the point of the mud is to make it so nothing yeah. falls out. Yeah. I think that the mud is making fall out. I guess we kind of need think, to dry. Uh, yeah, and I think that we need a. I think you got some of the dry part. But look, look how wet it is in the bottom. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And then you just wrap it around your wrist like this, and that gets it, that gets it circular, and you kind of like squeeze it a little bit, and you just let it go. And it's in like a circle shape. Alrighty, cool. Want to add some grass too? Like, yeah, you got this. This is the final layer on the outside for this for this level. I hope it'll hold. I know. I, I think it will. I know. I think it, it, it feels pretty sturdy in the center. I'm just gonna add a tiny piece of moss, and then I think we're ready to test it out. Karen and Caroline, we're ready. We're ready to test us. Okay, I'll grab the eggs here. So, oh, you guys are awesome. That's what it really smells oh, like one okay. by one. Yeah. We, what was wow, it? it's really cool. Yeah, we used, um, what, we, didn't, we didn't build it on here. We put it on last. Oh. And we built layer, and we tried to use little mud because we thought it would be heavy. Mm -hmm. And we just used a lot of this, like, dead grass. That's a good idea. Yeah, awesome. Ours guys. is really different. I know. You ready? Oh, yeah. Ready? One, two. One, two. two. Three, three, five, four, four five, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, nine, nine last one, ten. ten. Good awesome. job, you guys. That was awesome. awesome. Good job. Yeah. Dad, do you want to go touch yours now? Sure. 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 What we did in the beginning, we entwined, like kind of like, yeah, like weave, okay. and then we... And then that's kind of like a cradle so it can hold. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then we put moss in the middle, and then what we did is we took this hay right here, and we wrapped it around our arm so it would be in a circle shape, mm -hmm. then we so took it off. This is a lot different because you guys started on it. On it, yeah. You yeah. use more mud than us. Hey, you guys want to test it? Sure. Okay. One, two, three, three four, five, five six, six, seven, eight. Eight. Looks like it's gonna nine. Nine. Ten. Ten. Woo! Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Good job. You did awesome. Good job. Oh, so cool. So we both all we both got ten. I know. Awesome. Yeah. It's so interesting to see how just think about it. Birds can actually do this with their feet and yeah. and wings and it's just like amazing. Really cool. Our nests were able to support a lot of eggs, but didn't look nearly as nice as the ones that the real birds make. Keep watching, because later in the show, Cassie S. of Key Largo, Florida, will show you another really beautiful structure found in nature, a coral reef. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What animal makes the loudest sound, and what does it sound like? The loudest animal noise, I think, is an elephant. I think the animal that makes the loudest noise is the horse. The loudest animal noise, I think, is the guinea pig. The animal that I think is the loudest is the elephant. The animal that I think makes the loudest noise is the cow. 
And it sounds like this. Moo! Whoa! Moo! Kids make the loudest noise. I don't want to take my bath! What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? to show it. The words came after I drew the pictures first. Here's Alexander's story. Mark the Pencil, written and illustrated by Alexander S. of Muncie, Indiana. Hello, I am Mark the Pencil. I can talk. So can my friends. You probably want to meet my friends. There's Bob the Ruler, Smudge the Eraser, Jungle Rose and Light, their crayons, Sharp the pencil sharpener, sticky glue, and scissors. One day, when I fell off the teacher's desk, I learned how we can all stick together and help each other out. Oh, with the help of Sharpie's dad, all of my friends pulled together to rescue me. I got back up, but I broke my point. Sharpie's dad made it as good as new. The next day, we looked for a bigger adventure. We got in a backpack that belonged to a boy named Luke. He took us home without knowing it. When Luke was doing his homework, he heard us talking and he found us. He was surprised we could talk. Luke knew he was not supposed to have us, so he took us back to school. We were all excited to see Luke the next day. But he sat in the back row, and it was hard to talk to him. Luke was happy to see us, too. The teacher started the day with a surprise. She told us, I got the test scores back. Let's see who got what and what got who. The person who did the best in our class gets a prize. Who would win? In a few minutes, the scores were announced, and Luke won. The prize was me and my friends. We all went home with Luke again, and we were very happy. When Luke had homework, I would always help him. When he grew up, Luke took me to Harvard. I was even there the day he graduated. We have been best friends for a long time. The very end. <laughs> Remember when we made these button flowers? Well, Michelle of Gretna, Louisiana, 
sent us the directions for another project you can make using buttons. A button bracelet. It's really easy to make because all you have to do is glue some buttons onto an elastic and you have your bracelet. And you can make your button bracelet any way you'd like. You can make it using patterns. See how this one has a blue button, then an orange button, then orange and blue, and then blue and orange again. That's called a pattern. You can make your bracelet using all the same color buttons, like this one that's green, only different shades and sizes. Or you can do something totally random with your bracelet, like this one. First, cut your elastic so that it fits around your wrist. The best way to do this, well, I'll do it on this arm, is to roll your elastic around your wrist and cut it where it overlaps. I'll hold it with my thumb so it stays. I'll move this bracelet up. Okay. So I'll cut it right here. It's a little tough to cut through, but I think I got it. Oh, maybe. Here, I'll make the mark and now I'll cut it. Over here. There we go, perfect. Okay, now you want to arrange the buttons onto your elastic. I think I'll make a red bracelet. So I'll use all little and big red buttons. And I think my bracelet in the end is going to end up looking like the green bracelet that I showed you earlier because it has all the same colors, but all the buttons are different shades and sizes. Okay, and I think I'll put, here, let's see, a big one first, and then a little one, another little one, and I really like this button. It has a little shape of a flower inside of it. I'll put that one next. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll use another big button. And this one, I'll put another big one and a few little ones at the end. Yeah, this one looks good. Okay. After you've arranged your buttons on the bracelet, you want to glue them on. So, I'm going to glue the big one first. There we go. Make sure you don't glue any buttons to the end of your elastic. Here and here. Because that's where you'll be sewing your bracelet together. Put one down. I'll glue the little ones for next. Oops, stuck to my finger. Okay. Keep gluing your buttons down until your bracelet is finished. And let the glue dry overnight. The easiest way to do this is to take your elastic and fold it up like this. There we go. And sew where they overlap. Just like that. If you don't know how to sew, or if you're not allowed to, make sure you ask an adult to help you. And be sure to tie a tight, strong knot in the end of your thread when you're finished sewing. When you're all through making your bracelet, it should look like this. Now your bracelet is ready to wear. If you know any more Zoom Doos you can make using buttons, then send your ideas to Zoom. what lives here and what doesn't. This whole entire place is made out of coral rock. Coral is an ancient life that has been around for millions of years. The Florida Keys are actually coral themselves. You can't dig a hole here because there's no dirt. A big coral rock, we know it's playing coral by the lines in here. This is very old, all fossilized. This is a 45-foot catamaran and it's used for diving trips. Coral is a living thing and only lives in 
salt water. Coral reefs tend to grow in warmer waters and temperatures between 75 and 85 degrees. a habitat to many other living things. Without living coral, the fish and other animals will leave. by raising money for Goodwill, an organization that collects donations and helps people to find jobs. After we decided we would collect money for Goodwill, we made a special poster and a big jar for the donation. Next, we gave a presentation at our school where we talked about the ways that Goodwill helps people. In just one month, we were able to collect $70. Want to be a member of the Zoom team too? Visit WGBY.org slash Zoom and tell us what you do to volunteer. Remember, the small things you do can add up to make a big difference. Zoom into action! And join the Zoom team! <laughs> you can do with a suitcase that's a lot more fun than packing. It's called Balloon Jam, and it was sent in by Matthew F. of Salem, New Jersey. To set up your game, each team needs a suitcase and an equal amount of blown up balloons. Okay, Zoomers, you have 60 seconds to fill your suitcase with as many balloons as you can. At the end of the 60 seconds, you have to shut your suitcase, and if any of the balloons pop, they don't count. The team with the most balloons at the end that aren't popped wins. Okay, Zoomers, let's get packing. Ready? On your mark, get set, go! Oh no, it's okay, it's okay. So, it looks like the green team might have slightly more balloons in there. La 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 la. La 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 la. la. Whoa. Some of them are going to pop. Oh my god, I'm not popping! Come on, come on! Come on, you! Get it closed! Hold on, get it closed! Just put it down! Okay, you ready? Yeah, kind of. 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 You ready? Okay. Yeah, just make sure they don't fly over the place. So... <laughs> okay. So you guys have... Yeah, that's two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight,
inclusion in all Zoom media. This means that we can share your ideas with other Zoomers on TV, the web, in print materials, and in other media. So, send it to Zoom. You don't have to be a superhero to know how to speak Ubby Dubby. Just go to the Ubby Dubby Translator at the Zoom website to turn English into Ubby Dubby. Evans, Ubbin Bubby Dubba Bubby, Evans Pebble Ubbin Glovish. Funding for Zoom is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thanks. 